In this video, I'm going to discuss the imaging system that I used to create the Eurolift system procedure video that we will watch at the end. In addition, I will also narrate the video that we'll watch at the end of me performing a four implant Eurolift system procedure. Hello, my name is John Lin. I'm a urologist in Gilbert, Arizona. I've been very fortunate in that I have had a lot of experience in the performance of the Eurolift system procedure. I've also been recognized by Neotract, the makers of the Eurolift system, as a center of excellence in the performance of this procedure. When I perform cystoscopic procedures in the office, I typically use the Olympus Digital Imaging System. I reached out to the makers of the Redfin R3800 Digital Imaging System and asked if they would let me borrow their setup because a lot of urology offices do not use a digital camera system when they perform cystoscopies. They the urologist has been putting his or her eye to the eyepiece and getting really, really close and sometimes too personal to the patient when performing these procedures. When I reached out to uh, Firefly Global, they were very uh, gracious in that um, they shipped me their R3800, and when I received it, it looks something like this. I will put in the card above the unboxing video, a link to the unboxing video so that you can see the uh, setup as it is being unboxed. It comes with a digital processor and a digital camera that couples to the cystoscope. And um, I also use their optional RS201 LED light source. It's, the, it's that uh, black uh, rod light thing that you see on your screen. And um, that setup allows you to go from using your eyes to being able to display the image on any monitor and that digital processor by Redfin, um, the R3800 has a ton of outputs, including HDMI, um, SDI, uh, VGA, S-Video, all, all sorts of outputs so that you can concurrently put out video image signals to two different monitors if you wish so that the patient can see what you're seeing and you can also comfortably perform the procedure watching the monitor in front of you. All right, so that is the video system that I used at the uh, when I performed this uh, Eurolift procedure. The way it's set up is that, uh, let me give you a little context. When I performed the Eurolift system procedure, I performed the procedure in the office under IV sedation. The patient is zonked out. He does not know what's going on. He does not really care what's going on. And he is comfortably having the procedure done. And the uh, setup is similar to this, what you see right here. Um, on the uh, left side of your screen, you see the cystoscopic image. On the right side is me sitting between the uh, patient's legs with the instrument inside the urethra. And uh, let's go through the video real quick. And I will narrate it as we go along. This is the initial cystoscopy as I enter the anterior urethra, and I will, I will get to the um, external sphincter in just a second. Now, keep in mind, when I do this procedure, I do not have the irrigation fluid at full blast. I turn on the irrigation fluid just enough so that I could see and not anymore. Most often, I can perform the Eurolift system procedure with one liter bag of irrigation fluid, of sterile water. And as we go through the uh, prosthetic urethra, here we are inside the bladder. You see a little bit of trabeculation, uh, nothing bad. Uh, unfortunately, I have some bubbles at the lens. I remove the lens from and the obturator from the uh, patient, leaving the sheath in place. And now my assistant is loading, helping me load the Eurolift device into the onto the uh, lens. And here we are inside the uh, patient's bladder. Now this is the first implant. Uh, air bubbles right there. I'm slowly, again, not full blast on the irrigation, and you'll see me uh, focus the camera right there so you get the most crispy image. I put, placed the first implant at the patient's left side near the bladder neck, about 1.5 centimeters, distal to the bladder neck. I find the uh, uh, right reflection, and I deploy the implant. So that's implant number one out of four from this uh, procedure. My assistant then helps me unload the Eurolift 
use your Lyft device and then helps me load the new one like that. I reintroduce the device into the patient. Now, when I put in the device, I do not push it all the way in against the mucosa. I don't want to damage the bladder mucosa. Uh, instead, I withdraw the sheath a little bit when I put the uh, device in. Now I'm going to put the device on the in the patient's um, right uh, bladder neck. I compress laterally, say anterior. I make sure the suture is perpendicular, and then I deploy the implant and I cut the suture. Again, uh, the bladder is not over distended. Irrigation is half full. My assistant helps me exchange the Eurolift implant, and I reintroduce the undeployed implant back into the bladder. I do not damage the mucosa. I do not stick the mucosa. I slowly uh, distend the bladder with, uh, with, without uh, turning the stopcock on full blast, and uh, I find the Vero Montanum. I stay anterior. I press 20 degrees laterally. I deploy the device, make sure the suture is perpendicular, and I cut it and I put the uh, implant in, and uh, this will be the last implant. I will exchange the, the uh, use the implant. My assistant puts on the new one. I put it back into the bladder. Again, I do not uh, stick the implant uh, into the uh, mucosa. I try not to damage the mucosa or injure the mucosa uh, when I uh, put the, imp the new uh, uh, de uh, device into the bladder. Here, I'm trying to locate the uh, right uh, apex, and I found the uh, Verumontanum, 20 degree lateral compression, make sure the suture is straight, cut, deploy, and here with the irrigation off, you can see a nice big open anterior channel after the deployment of four Eurolift implants. And that is how the Eurolift uh, procedure is uh, done in a very efficient fashion. Um, I hope that uh, you find, found it helpful. If you're interested in getting the uh, Firefly uh, Global's Redfin R3800 video system, I will put their link in the video description. I will also uh, put a, um, a link to a detailed description of the various components of the R3800 uh, right here. If you click on this link up uh, right in that box up there, um, you will, it, will, it will take you there. Don't forget, if you think that this video is helpful, please click subscribe and turn on the notification bell so that you can catch anything and everything that is new coming down the pike.